Welcome everybody to TechCraft, this is Rob, and today's video is part five of my six part beginner's guide to Siri shortcuts, where we'll be discussing how to go out and find great shortcuts made by other members of the community, and how to share your own shortcuts with the wider world. Let's go. So if you haven't seen the first four parts of this series yet, make sure you check those out above. I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who supported me in creating this series so far. Thanks for all the feedback and for all the great suggestions. A particularly big shout out to Brian Oxley, who has been a great collaborator on this and who has a fantastic blog called Siri is My Friend, which if you're into Siri or shortcuts at all, you should definitely be following. Let's dive straight in. So let's start with the easiest way to find shortcuts out in the wild, and that's using the gallery that is built into the shortcuts app. So if I go down here to the bottom right hand corner and click on the gallery, you'll see that I'm straight into the gallery here. All these shortcuts have been approved and checked by Apple so that you know they're safe to install. Installing one is really easy. I just press the plus icon here and up pops the content of this shortcut. Um, so I can browse through the actions here if I want to before I install just to make double sure that they're safe and then I can click add shortcut. Now, some shortcuts are configurable at install time. So when there are parameters, in this case, the playlist that I want to play while I'm in reading mode, then I can configure these at install time. And we'll see shortly how to do this for our own shortcuts. I'm just gonna skip this step and I will choose an app to open in reading mode. I'm just gonna choose the Kindle app. So let's have that one there and then click done. Now, if I go to my shortcuts, we'll see that reading mode has appeared here and I'm just gonna press the three dots and come into here and show you that once you've run the installation process and if you want to re-customize, reconfigure it, you can choose this customize shortcut option here and the questions that you were prompted at install time, you get prompted again. So I'm gonna choose a playlist this time. I'm gonna choose my run faster playlist, press continue. It remembers that I chose the Kindle option last time, which is great, so I click done. And now this shortcut is fully configured. So the gallery definitely has some interesting shortcuts. You'll definitely want to browse through there, especially if you're trying to learn how to construct interesting, complex shortcuts. It's worth just seeing what uh, shortcuts in the wild look like. However, the most interesting shortcuts are not really published in the gallery. You'll find them in more open communities like shareshortcuts.com, uh, shortcutsgallery.com, and routinehub.com. All three of these websites are worth looking at. For today though, we're gonna to focus on Routine Hub because I think that is the community that has the nicest workflow for publishing shortcuts and updating shortcuts so that your users always have the latest version. Let's dive in. Okay, so here I am on the routinehub.co website and I want to install a shortcut from here. And we're going to install this shortcut called Routine Pub, which is the shortcut we will use to publish our own shortcuts into the Routine Hub. And annoying as it is that these names are so similar, we're gonna dive in by pressing on the button there. And what we're gonna do is hit Get Shortcut. And eventually the Shortcuts app will open, but we'll get this message saying that Routine Pub can't be opened. By default, you're not able to install shortcuts from outside the gallery. These are referred to as untrusted shortcuts. You have to enable this option in the settings yourself before you can go ahead and install these shortcuts. So I'm just gonna press okay, and then come into settings. And I'm gonna scroll down here until we find shortcuts, oops. And then just make sure that the allow untrusted shortcuts option is checked, press allow you'll need to put in your uh, pin code here. And there we go. If I come back to the Routine Hub website now and press Get Shortcut, this time round, it will load up the shortcut. Now, I can browse through here. This is a particularly long and complicated shortcut. Um, I'm just gonna scroll straight to the bottom and press Add Untrusted Shortcut. So that's Routine Pub installed from the Routine Hub website. Should say a big thanks at this point to Harley Hicks, who is the creator of the Routine Hub website, and to Mike Beasley, who is the creator of the Routine Pub shortcut and the Update Kit shortcut that we'll also see shortly. So before we see how to share our shortcuts in Routine Hub, let's quickly see how to create a shared link to our shortcut, and we can pass that link to our friends or family. So I'm gonna come into the settings for this trivia game shortcut, and then press the share icon down here, 
And then inside this share sheet, I'll just press copy iCloud link. You're prompted to make sure you want to create this link because anyone with this link can have access to the shortcut. But I'll just okay, uh, click yes, copy link. After a short period of time, you get the prompt to say that the link has been copied and you can now share that link with your friends. And the link will look something like this where it's got icloud.com slash shortcuts and then slash some long ID. And you can pass that to anybody you want to use this shortcut. They must have the allow untrusted shortcuts option enabled to be able to even install that shortcut. So sharing shortcuts via links is great if all you want to do is share your shortcuts with one or two people who you know. If you want people to be able to discover your shortcuts, if you want to share with many people, if you want those people to be able to update your shortcut as you change it, then you'll want to use the Routine Hub or something similar, and you'll want to use another shortcut called Update Kit that allows you to push out your updates to your users. Let's see how they work. Okay, so I'm back on the Routine Hub website and I've signed up for an account and here I am back on my kind of homepage and as yet I've not authored any shortcuts. So I'm going to create my first shortcut and I have to start here on the website, kind of create a placeholder where I want to publish my shortcut content. So I'll click create your first shortcut. I'm going to publish my trivia game shortcut here, so I'll call it trivia game. In categories, I'll choose games. I don't have any required apps for this. I'm going to say that this is a simple trivia game game and in the full description i'll just type in a trivia game using the open trivia db brilliant <clears throat> this doesn't have any nsfw content so i'm just going to proceed and i'm going to click continue with routine pub because we're going to use the routine pub shortcut to publish this shortcut online I get this ID and this is my shortcut ID and I need this ID now to link from the routine pub. So I'm gonna copy that and then go to the shortcuts app. And then from the homepage, what I want to do is run this routine pub uh, shortcut here. Now it needs access to iCloud Drive because it's gonna store a whole bunch of interesting configuration parameters in there. Click okay. You also need your routine pub API key. To get that, let's go back to Safari. Go into settings here and then grab the API key. If you don't see an API key here, just press the regenerate API key button. Um, I'm going to change mine after this, obviously. Come back into here, paste that into the shortcuts uh, dialog box here. You can now create a passcode. Each time you run Routine Pub after the first time, you don't need to re enter your API key. That's encrypted in your settings and encrypted by that pin code. I'll just put four zeros in for now. Click OK. After a short while, the routine pub menu pops up and there are a whole bunch of interesting options here. You can see which shortcuts you've got. So if I press my shortcuts, it's gonna have access to the routine hub and I can see I've got my trivia game here. If I click on this, I can get hold of that ID again here if I want to. So I'll just go and grab that and then I'll run routine pub one more time. And I'm gonna choose publish update this time. Now, these are all the shortcuts I have installed on my device. So I'm gonna scroll down until I see trivia game choose that one, press done. I'm prompted again to create the iCloud link because ultimately all the sharing happens via these iCloud links. This time it's asking me to select which shortcut on the routine hub it is that I want to uh, link this uh, iCloud link to. So it's the trivia game. I'm gonna give this a version number, I'm gonna call it 1.0, perfect. You have to type in some release notes. So we'll say that this is the first release. Click okay. Do I want to publish this? Press okay. Okay, great. Updated trivia game to 1.0. If I come back to the routine hub now and go to my dashboard, I'll see that I've got my trivia game here. And I can now just share this with everybody and they can get hold of the shortcut by pressing get shortcut and that will install it and that's perfect. I obviously don't want to install that just now. What I want to do instead is see how I can make my shortcut configurable and also see how I can make it updatable. Okay, so I want to make my trivia game shortcut configurable during install. So I'll go into the, the shortcut properties and then into this import questions section here. And I want to add a question for the difficulty. And notice the user interface is a little bit hokey. What you're seeing here basically is every action. And then for every action, the slots in that action that can be linked to a question. Now, some 
things cannot have questions linked to them like this set variable action neither the input nor the variable can be linked to a question but this piece of text here which i know is the difficulty can be and this is maybe a recommendation i'd like to make which is when you're adding questions to the installation process of your shortcut you should try to put the actions they correspond to right near the top because it just makes it easier to pick them out so i'm going to make this one into uh, the difficulty i'm just going to type the question in here And the default answer I want to be easy. Now there is no kind of yes button or confirm. You just press the back button up here, which is a little bit weird. I'll add another question, this time for this number here, which is the number of questions. And we'll just say question count. And I'll make the default five. Cool. And then that's that's done. And I can obviously run that configuration process again by clicking on the customize shortcut here and choosing, okay, leave that as easy. And maybe I'll just say one for now. That's brilliant. Okay, perfect. So now what I want to do is publish my shortcut into the Routine Hub again with the updates, but I really want to add auto-updating to the shortcut as well, so that if you're a user of my shortcuts, when I publish the new version, you don't have to go out and find it, you'll be notified of it and you'll be able to install it immediately. Let's see how that works. So I already have a shortcut called Update Kit installed, and you can get that from Mike Beasley's website here and you just install the right version for your operating system. So if you're using iOS 13 or iOS 12, make sure you get the right version. And how this works is from our trivia game shortcut, which we want to make updatable, we're going to run the update kit shortcut as kind of our final thing. Now, before we do that, we need to make sure the update kit is present on our user's device. Obviously, all of this is running on your user's device, not on your device. So yes, you may have Update Kit installed, but not every one of your users will. So to check that we have Update Kit, so to check that we have Update Kit present, I'll first use the Get Shortcuts action to get all the shortcuts on this device, and then I'll check to see if Update Kit is present. And just a little note here: I did this by changing the type of my shortcuts. Um, is to text rather than as a shortcut, which is which is quite a nice little thing you can do there. Then once you've done that, you can use the uh, contains operator. So once you know that update kit is installed, you can actually call the update kit shortcut, and we do that passing in a few parameters as a dictionary. The first thing we pass in is the shortcut name, which is trivia game. We pass in the current version, which when I first uploaded this to Routine Hub was 1.0, but we're gonna update that to 1.1 in a second, and then our Routine Hub ID, which is 4158 for this shortcut. So I'm gonna change that to 1.1 now. We can upload this, and then any versions we run will have the auto update process in. Let's see how that works. So I'm going to click done. Come to routine pub. Publish an update. Choose our trivia game shortcut. Click create link. This time it's version 1.1. And we added install configuration. These are great release notes and then click OK. Okay, updated trivia game to 1.1. Now we can come back to the Routine Hub and see that in action. So there's my latest version. I can even get hold of past versions here, which is quite nice. And I'm gonna actually download this 1.0 version and show you what would happen if we did the actual update process. Okay, this is great. Scroll down. now. What's going to happen is because I've got the original trivia game shortcut on my iPad, I get prompted to see whether I want to replace that or keep both. But I'm just going to hit keep both. You can obviously just install it directly. So now I've got a copy of trivia game installed from Routine Hub. Let's just take a quick look at it. Um, it doesn't have any of the import questions there. So we know that this is version one. And in fact, I did add the update kit stuff to this right from the beginning. I just didn't show it right away. So if we run this now and play the game, and then at the, after we've played the game, we'll be prompted to update. Okay, great. So my game has finished, and I'm here to do the update process. And I can either do an install or see what's happened or remind me later or skip this version. All these things are built into update kit, which is quite nice. You don't have to do any of this. I'm just going to do the install. And all it's going to do is bring up the actual shortcut with the get shortcut link and I can uh, run it. Press add. 
Now this time I get the configuration uh, questions because that's what we added in version one. So I'm going to run that and I'll maybe make the default into 10. Press done. And again, there are multiple versions of this shortcut installed now. Now normally you just click replace. I'm going to click keep both because I want my original still to play with. And if I come to my shortcuts, I've now got my trivia game too. And this time we know it has the import questions in there. Sharing shortcuts is one of the best ways to learn how to build. So looking at, sh so going out into the community and finding shortcuts that already exist is a fantastic way to learn how to build better shortcuts, build more complicated shortcuts, and just to really see what's possible and what other people are doing. And of course, then if you can start to give back, if you can start to share your own creations, then that's fantastic. And with the combination of Routine Hub, Routine Pub, and Update Kit, there's quite a nice workflow and nice tool chain there for actually building shortcuts that you're going to support over the long term for a big user base. So I should just say at this point, I really only scratched the surface of what you can do with Routine Pub and in particular of what you can do with Update Kit. I recommend going to Mike's website, reading documentation, trying out some different things there and just seeing what's possible. He really has built quite a comprehensive toolkit there. So I hope you found this video useful and I hope that you found it entertaining. If so, please hit like, please hit subscribe and don't just hit subscribe, but hit the bell as well so you don't miss out on any future content. Next Sunday, we'll have part six, the final part of this series where I'm gonna just share some of my experiences over 20 years of being a software developer and maybe just share a few hints and tips for how you can build better, more maintainable shortcuts for the long term. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.